This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends, this is a 75-year-old lady with a non-dilating pupil and an intumescent lens. Let's join in the case in the middle. Uh, I have already placed the BHEX pupil expansion device and I am using dispersive OVD to maintain the chamber during rexis creation. There is an egress of fluid cortex out of the bag as soon as the anterior capsule is punctured. Instead of my usual technique of performing the two-stage rexis, I am performing the rexis at, in a single shot because I believed that at this point the intracapsular pressure is not very much and I could get away by doing the CCC at one go. But overconfidence is not a good thing as I realized immediately. The rexis tear has extended to the equator and I could not retrieve it. Using micro scissors I cut out the flap. This is the area where the rexis has extended. Since the nucleus is not bulky and relatively soft, I decided to continue with fake emulsification and uh, as a rule, in an eye with discontinuous rexis, hydrodissection is usually avoided. I don't do it now. Time to phaco. I aspirate the superficial epinucleus and then do a couple of trenches so that I can bury my phaco tip deep into the substance of the nucleus and I am performing my first vertical chop here. The grip is not great and the nucleus slips and tilts. I re-grasp and chop it once again. The separation mind you is not through and through. So I need to do it once again. I gently rotate the nucleus and the second chop is performed. The nucleus is mobile because of the lack of the epinucleus and the cortex underlying. Hence stabilizing the nucleus while chopping is becoming tricky. The lateral separation maneuvers are not adequate. We can see that the posterior plate is not cracking. This is primarily because the incomplete rexus is constantly playing at my back of my mind. So I am subconsciously trying to be extra safe and hence my lateral separation maneuvers are not adequate enough. So once the first chop is done and the fragment is loose, I want to get the first piece out of the bag as this will create some space inside the bag which will in turn reduce any stress on the extended or tone capsular margin. The fragment is emulsified in the antechamber. The next quadrant is chopped and the fragment is subsequently pulled out of the bag for emulsification. But at this point I realize that the BSS pouch has emptied and needs to be replaced. Now before coming out I am injecting dispersive OVD through the side port to ensure that the chamber does not shallow. It is critical to maintain the chamber at every step of the surgery. This will minimize the chance of anticapsular tear extending beyond the equator. So back to FACO. The fragment in question is emulsified eventually. The remaining hemineucleus is then divided into smaller fragments which are then emulsified. As is evident during the process of emulsification, we can see that the plane of emulsification is much more anterior than what I usually would recommend and practice. Well, this is primarily because of the situation which we are in now, that is the presence of a discontinuous rexus. So we realize that it's much more safer to emulsify the fragments far away from the bag as much as possible because of this scenario. Uh, but at this point, I want to pause here and demonstrate the marks on the endothelium which are suggestive of mechanical trauma to it. It would be interesting to see how the cornea would look like the next day. Eventually, the emulsification of the nucleus is complete and now is the time to remove the cortex. The bag is filled with viscoelastic and the cortex aspiration is being done. Rarely, we may have fluid misdirection in eyes with extended rexus causing shallowing of the antechamber uh, because the fluid gets across the zonules into the burger space and pushes the entire bag forward. But luckily in this case, uh, nothing like that happened. It looks alright. The chamber and the bag are nice and deep. The cortex aspiration is completed. A single piece hydrophobic IOL is implanted into the bag. In a routine case, I would have removed the BX device at this stage itself. But in this case, because of the situation we are in, that is the rexus having gone radial, I retain the ring until I remove all the OVD from behind the IOL and in the bag. 
It takes a couple of minutes to do so. And I also confirm that the IOL is in the bag and the haptics are away from the area of the discontinuous rexus. Uh, this is quite critical to confirm as we don't want the thick haptic of the single piece hydrophobic lens to migrate into the sulcus which could then induce a chronic inflammation by irritating the uveal tissue. Again, I'm injecting HPMC into the antechamber now and then the BX device is being removed. Although the step of removing the BX device could have been performed by using continuous irrigation alone, but since I had noted the endothelial damage already existing, I didn't want to take any more chances. Then the viscoelastic is removed and once it is done, the incisions are hydrated. And that's it, time for the results. The first post-op day. As expected, there are areas of localized corneal edema, which of course clear off completely by the next week. And the patient was quite happy with the visual outcome. But the lesson which we learned from this case is that the plane of emulsifying the nucleus is very critical. Anterior plane of emulsification, even if the nucleus is soft, as was in this case, can result in mechanical trauma to the endothelium. And we need to be aware of this. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.